Hello and welcome. Today I will demonstrate how to make a little shell game. Most of you will be familiar with it. So basically what it means is that there are three chests and one has a ball in it and you have to keep track uh, of, of the chest uh, where the ball is hidden. So now you can play the game, hit yes. And now you see the middle one has a wall in it and afterwards it starts to move and you have to keep track of a chest with a ball in it and in this case it should be the middle one and it tells you you won and afterwards you can start again and it will be always uh, randomized and it won't be always on the same position and you can also increase the speed if you want to make it a bit more difficult but yeah now you can see I lost and it's properly working sorry for the interruption but as you can see even though it's in German uh, most people aren't subscribed to my channel who watch my videos so it really is only a click and it helps me a lot to keep this stuff here going, so I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel. Thank you. So what we're we gonna do, it, it can be a bit annoying to set up. That's the reason why we need to think of it uh, a bit. And yeah, it's really annoying to set up because you can make a lot of mistakes, so you need to be careful if you start it. So the first thing we need are the three chests. So we will create them. I simply use included ones. So this will be chest one. And we set it to direction fix and to through. So they can move through each other. And we need to use a switch. So those uh, chests are only appear if the game has started. So we can call this start shell game. And here you can choose the speed can make it fast or slow. I, for testing purposes, I keep it on normal. But you can change uh, them later, as you like. So this is the first chest. You can hit OK. Then you can copy this one and paste it. And call this chest number two. You can keep everything here as it is and now you copy and paste the next one and call this chest free so those are our free chests now you need something that symbolizes a ball that get that gets hidden and I simply use this flame here you can use whatever you want and this will be also activated by the start shell game uh, switch and you also need this to uh, set to direction fix and through and can put it below characters so it uh, disappears when moving up to the chest and here we need another switch and this is which we call hide ball so set it to true or simply below characters and this is the setup for the ball and the chest and now we can go on and create our little game starter here so I'll call this shell game uh, we give him uh, an image doesn't matter 
take whatever you like and now we can start and give us a text so I already copied my text here you want to play the shell game and so on and it costs so much and you can win that amount of money so you can specify it as you like hit ok and afterwards we need to show choice if we want to play the game or not so when no then nothing happens if we want to play the game we first check if we have enough gold this is what we can select here gold if gold is bigger than in my case I say one game costs 500 create an else branch if you don't have enough money so if gold is oh we can first do this here so if you don't have enough gold then you get a text which says you don't have enough gold so this case is now done and now we can go on and check or do our processing here for for the start of a game so the first thing we do is change the gold so we, de we decrease it by 500 and afterwards we show we uh, we set the movement route for the ball oh it's called event 4 here so just for cleaning purposes let's call this ball and now you can edit it and now we show that the ball is moving inside uh, the box in the middle so the first thing we do here is we turn the switch on which is start shell game so here our game gets started we move one up so the ball moves inside of the box and afterward we put a little wait timer and set it to wait for competition and afterwards we so after this is done we hide the ball so it disappears again that's where, where we need this switch hide ball so if it's on then you see hide ball is on then the ball will disappear we could check this if this works as intended so we go to this guy we ask if you want to play the game oh we don't have enough gold okay so just for testing I just add a bit amount of gold before we start so now we have 500 gold if we talk to this guy but normally your player should have a certain amount of gold before reaching the minigame stage where he has to pay so you need 500 yes and now you see it moves up and disappears so this is working fine and now we need a new event page and we it starts with uh, we start shell game which we use here and we choose we need to choose the uh, the actor again and we set this to auto run so if the game starts then you can do nothing you can't move or anything so this is why it's good to set this to auto run and now we can put a little weight here so you can actually see where the flame or the ball is going uh, that it's going to the middle box and 
uh, it waits a bit before the game starts. And now we need a few variables. Uh, the first one will be uh, the count, the count chest, what I call it. And this will simply, because we will use a loop, so that we can basically say uh, switch the boxes around 10 times, 20 times, or as much as you like, and this count uh, will break the loop. So we set this to zero. So whenever uh, one box got m uh, moved, we add one to this counter, and if it reached a certain amount, then we break the loop, and it goes, uh, it goes on, and yeah, we will, you will see later what I mean. But first, we need to set this up. After that, we need to keep track of uh, the positions of our boxes, because uh, the ball will always go into this box. So we need to keep track where every box is, and if we switch them around, so we know. Uh, yeah, where the ball is actually going, if it's left or right or in the middle. So we, to keep track, we create new variables for each uh, box. So the first will be position chest one, and also to check uh, where to move those boxes. So we can copy and paste it here. So we have a position of each chest. So chest one, position one. So uh, to demonstrate it, we need to we need to think a bit. So I so that you understand what I mean. So this is our setup. Let's say this is box one, this is box two, and this is box three. And now we, we need to keep track, uh, and we have to see how they are moving. So what can happen is, so what are our options? So box one can, oh, I want this to be red. So box one, this is one option. It can switch with box two. The other option is it can switch with box three. And the last option is, is that box two is switching with box three. So this is our basic setup. And yeah, so we can take this, so we can keep track of it and copy this because I, I know there are only six different possibilities or six different scenarios. So we can make it like this and the black color again. Okay, it doesn't let me pick the okay. So the first scenario is that this is box one, this is box two, and this is box three. The second scenario would be this is box one, this is box three, this is box two. The third scenario is box two, box one, box three. Uh, the next scenario will be this is box two, this is box three, and this is box one, and so on until we have every scenario covered that will be possible. Three, two, one. So since there are only three boxes and only one box can move at a time, those are all possible scenarios that are possible for our game. And for each step only one box can move, so I also draw this here, so this would be, because we want to, 
Uh, it's hard to explain, but with every step, there is one of these paths that would be taken. So we can generate a random number between or from zero to two. And if it's uh, zero, then this path will be taken. So two and one switch. If it's uh, one, then one and three get switched. And if it's two, then two and three get switched. And this is the same for everyone here. So zero would be switch one and three, one would switch one and two, and two would switch three and two. And for all scenarios, it's the same. So I needed to draw this to keep track of where we are going at the moment. So now we can create our three three positions. And as you can see, in our first scenario, box one is posi on position one, box two is on position two, and box three is on position three. So this is our start of a game. So we set box one to position one. Then we can copy and paste this two times. And now we can say uh, chest two is on position two and chest three will be on position three. And now we have our uh, game set up, our start. So the next thing is we need to do, uh, we need to do is to reset the boxes here because if we are switched up and box one is on the right side and so on, it will mess up our whole setup. So we need to, at the beginning, we need to set them to their position. So box one should be here, box two should be here, the uh, box three should be here. And to do with uh, this, we can simply set an event location. We choose chest one and put it here where chest one should be standing. Then we can copy it and paste it two times, edit it, and hit chest two. Chest two should, would be the one in the middle. And chest three is the one on the right side. So this is our start setup for each game. And now uh, we start our loop, which I was talking about earlier. So this this here will be repeated over and over again until we break the loop. This is why we included the, um, the count chest. Because uh, now we can, at the end, so we can do this first. So at the end of our code, the variable count chest should be added by, uh, by one. And now we can say if count chest reach 10. So this means uh, this here will, so this loop will be executed 10 times. And afterwards, we, So if it reaches in, we can uh, deactivate our shell game. So start shell game to can set it to off. We can turn our hide ball off. So the ball will be visible again afterwards. We start a new game. And we need to change the position of the ball. So we take a ball and put it back to this position since it moved up. And at the end, we break the loop. All right, so this is the setup for the end of the game. And, oh, this shouldn't be here. So this should be here. All right, so, and now before this happens here, we now need to do the really annoying part. And this is covering all our scenarios. So with, as you, as we already see here, our first scenario is that 
number one is on position one, number two is on position two, and number three is on position three. And now we need to check for it. So we use our variable that we created. So position chest one. Oh, no, we take it here at the top. Position chest one. If, oh, not control variable, sorry. We need to use a conditional branch. So if position chest one is on one, then we can copy this and paste it in here. Now we can check for if position chest 2 is on position 2 and now we can copy and paste it again and edit it and check for position chest 3 is on 3. So this will be always the start of the game since we set it up here. So we say chest 1 is on the left, chest 2 is on the middle, chest 3 is on the right and this is what we check here. So this case happens, this is our first scenario. So it would be uh, smarter, I guess, to add the comment and say this is scenario one. And now we can see here, all right, this is scenario one. And now we need to check what should, should be happening on scenario one. So if this is the case, so if Chest 1 is on the left, chest 2 is on the middle, chest 2 is on the right. Uh, we need to... We need to get one of our movements. So, these are our three movements. So, either it's 0, so 1 switches with 2. If it's 1, 1 switches with 3. And if it's 2, then 2 switches with 3. I hope uh, it makes <laughs> some sort of sense. But uh, to do this, we just simply uh, create a new variable, which is randomly generate a number between 0 and 2. And we call this the chest randomizer. I guess. So this will give us always, so in this scenario, this will give us a random number between, uh, from zero to two. So this means our three cases here. So zero, one, or two. And now we need to check for those cases. So if the random number that uh, got generated is zero, Then again, I use this. So if it's zero, one and two should switch the positions. So one has to move two to the right and two has to move two to the left. And this is exactly what we are doing here. So we click here, we set the movement route. Then we Select our chest one, which should be moving two to the right. So here, this is chest one at the moment, and it moves to the middle, and chest two moves two steps to the left. So here we don't need to wait for completion. And now we can copy and paste this here. And so we did the movement for our first chest, it moves two to the right, and now we need to make the movement for the middle chest and make it move to to the left so we select chest 2 and make make it move to to the left and here we hit on wait for completion so these two movements are basically happening at the same time and we wait for the second one uh, so yeah we simply wait for it, so the movement is done and then the next move is happening. And afterwards, since we move both of these chests, we need to keep track uh, of the position. So chest one, uh, for the chest one position uh, moved to the right, so chest one is now in the middle, so it's on 
you see here, chess one is on position one, and if it moves two to the right, it should be on position two and not uh, position one. So this is one, two, three. And since it moved, we need to change a variable and select our position chess one and set it to position two. And we can copy and paste this again. And now we need to edit it and also change the position. So we change our position of uh, chest number two. And chest number two is now on position one, since it moved two to the left. So this we set this to one and select chest number two. So this is our first movement, the only movement we have. So we basically have this done. And now you know why I think it's annoying to do, because we need to do this for every root here. So we have a bit of work to do. So the next uh, step is to switch one and three. So we are now here. And to do this, we can simply copy this whole. Oh, uh, no. Uh, the thing. <laughs> Sorry, we copy this randomizer uh, if statement and paste it here under the else. And now you see we create a random variable. We have zero. The zero case is working. Now we need to check if it's one. And so we set this to one. And again, you can see here, this is our route for one. So one and three should be switching. So one and three, this and this one. So we need to move four steps. So the first chest need to move four to the right. And the third chest need to move four to the left. So to do this, we can simply here add here two to the right. So the chest one is moving to this position. And now we need to select chest three and move it four to the left. <coughs> and again, we need to set the positions. So as we can see here again, one switches with three. So the position of one is now here, so it's position three, and the position of uh, chest number three is now on position one, so we need to set this to one. So we can say position chest one is now on position three, and position chest three is now on position one. And again, we copy this and paste it here, and now we need to check for the last case of a random number. So here we can uh, deselect the else branch in the last case. So you see the randomizer gives us a number between zero and uh, from zero to two. So in zero, this happens. One is this. And if it's two, then this should happen. And as you can see here again, our two, our case here for number two is two and three switch with positions. So to do this, we simply need to check, uh, select our box number two, move it two to the right. And so we need to delete two here and select check uh, chest two. So it moves two to the right and box three needs to move two to the left. So we can leave it as uh, chest free. And in the end, we again need to set the position. So since chest two and three are switching, we need to set the position of box two to three. So we edit it. Position chest two 
is now on free. And we position of chest free. So we move it from here to here. Should be now on position two. And this is our first case. So we have basically done this here. And now we need to check for the other cases. And the next one will be box one is on position one, box three is on position two, box two is on position three. And this is how it, this is why I said uh, it's annoying. So we complete our first scenario. We can copy this, so select this and this. Now we can copy it and paste it over the contrast variable, paste it. Now we can go up until you see our pasted code. So this is scenario one. Now we go down and rename it to scenario two. And as you can see again, our scenario two is this. So one, three, two. And so we can adjust this accordingly. So position of chest one stays the same. As you can see, position stays the same. We only need to switch those up. So position of chest number two is on three now. So in this case, it's on the right side and chest number three is in the middle. So it gets the number two here in the if in the conditional branch. And we can leave a randomizer like it as it is. And now we can check again. And this is again the same. So if our randomizer is zero, so in this case, as you can see here, let's make it that again. So this is zero. Oops. This is zero. This is path one. This is path two. And on zero, you see one and three has to switch the positions. So we do this by, so as you can see, one and three need to switch positions in this case. So, and our case is that chest number one is on position one and chest number three is on position two. So this is one and this is two. So what we need to do is to move chest number one, two to the right and chest number three, which is in the middle in this case, two to the left. So this can stay as it is. And here we need to select chest three and it needs to move two to the left. Afterwards, we need to uh, we need to adjust our positions. So in this case, chest one was here, moves two to the left. So it is at position two. And in here, chest three in the middle, moves two to the left. So chest three should be on position one. So we go to the next case if randomizer is one. <laughs> so this is how it goes. This is how it will be all the time now. So we got this case done. Now we go to the next case. So if it's one, one and two need to switch. So chest one moves four to the left and chest two. Oh, chest one moves four to the right. So one, two, three, four and chest two needs to move four to the left to switch positions with the first one. So what this means, box one is now on the right side. So this is right because three symbolizes the right side and box two in this case switches to the position of box one. And the last case now is 
box 3 and box 2 switch positions. So if it's 2 here, then those 2 will uh, switch the positions. So what we do now is we move chest 3 2 to the right, because at the moment chest 3 is in the middle, so it needs to move 2 to the right, and chest 2 needs to move 2 to the left. So we select chest 2 here, and again we set the according positions, so box 3 moves to this side, so the new position of chest 3 is now position 3 on the right, and we edit this again, the next one here, and the position of box 2 is now on position 2, so it's in the middle. And this is it for scenario 2, and now we <laughs> we only have 4 other scenarios to go. So again, copy this whole thing with the scenario command, copy it, paste it above the control variable here with the count chest, go up until you see it. Now you can change this to scenario 3, and this is this is how it will go on. So again, scenario. So we covered this scenario now. Now we need the next scenario. So the next scenario is on the left side is box number two, on the middle box number one, and on the right side box number three. So we do this whole thing over and over again until we got all our scenarios. Uh, uh, in, yeah, until we all set up this. And now you see, okay. Okay, we set it up. Uh, so position of chest 1. So chest 1 is now in the middle. So it's number 2. Chest 2 is on the left, so it's 1. And chest 3 is on the right side, so it's number 3. After what, uh, we get our randomizer again. Here's our randomizer. So the first case is, I, uh, I hope uh, the concept is clear, otherwise you can look at the image again and you will see that the next thing we need to do is to switch box number 2 and number 1. So box number 2 will move 2 to the right. And box number one, we move two to the left. We change the position again. So box two will be now in the middle. So we change this, this to box two or chest two. And number box number one moves from the middle to the left side. So we select. Uh, select box number 1 and set it to 1 since it's the left side. Then we need to check the next case. Again, this is box 2 is here and this is box 3. So box 2 and 3 switch. So we select box 2 here. Hit OK. And here we select box 3 or chest 3 and afterward so we'll switch the position so the new position of chest 2 is now on the right side and the position of box or chest 3 is now on the left side and that's it and afterwards we go for the last option, as you can see here again, we got this, we got this, and now we need to do this again, so 1 is in the middle, 3 is on the right, so we switch both of them. So we move chest number 1, 2 to the right, and we move 
chest, three, two to the left. Now we switch positions. So box one is now here. So we need to change this here to box one. And now is it on the right side, number three. And box number three move to the middle. So box number three is now in the middle. So we need to set box uh, chest number three and say it's in the middle. And this is scenario three. <laughs> and now we only have uh, three scenarios to go. So again, copy the comment, copy this and paste it here above control variable, control chest, scroll a bit up, change the name to scenario four. And now you can set it up again. Uh, did I set it up here? I think so, yeah, yeah. All right, so we go back to scenario four. Our, as you can see again, scenario four is Box number two is on position on the left position, three is in the middle, one is on the right side. So we set it up accordingly. So one is on the right side, that means one is number three. Chest two is on the left side, so it stays at one. And chest three is in the middle, so the position is number two. And then we go over and over again. Now we need to switch box two and three. So we select here, box two, oh, uh, box two, moves two to the right, box three, moves two to the left, new position of box two is number, is in the middle, so it's two, new position of Box three is one, since it's now on the left side. Now we go for the second case, which means we need to switch chest two and one. So two is here right now, one is here. So chest two needs to move four to the right. Chest one needs to move four to the left. New position. Box two is now on the right side, so this uh, can stay as it is, since box two is already free. And box one moves from the right side to the left side. So box or chest one moves to position one. Now the last case is box number three is in the middle, box number one is here, and those two would be switching positions, so we say chest number three is moving two to the right, chest number one is moving two to the left, new position of chest three is now on the right, and new position of chest one is now in the middle. I hope I don't didn't mix anything up here, but as long as you stay to this what I'm doing here, uh, it will be it will be the right thing what you do. So again, copy those two. So you can copy those two and paste it above contrast. Go a bit back up. And now only two scenarios are left. So again, we check here, or less uh, here. We have done this scenario now, and also this. So box three is left, one is in the middle, two is on the right. So we set it up accordingly. So one is on the right, this matches up. Uh, chest number two, Oh no, I'm, I also almost made a mistake. So chest one is in the middle right now. So it's on position two. Chest two 
is on the right side, so it's number three. Chest three is on the left side, so it's one. And now we can go back here again. So the first thing again, chest three needs to move two to the right. Chest one needs to move two to the left. Yep. So it was three is here, one is here, so three moves two to the side. So position of box three is now in the middle and the position of box one is now on the left side here. And again, next case, uh, box number three, switch with, so this is number three, this is number two, and they both switch. So number, chest number three needs to move four to the right, and box number two needs to move four to the left. New positions, so box number three here is now on position three, so edit this. Set it to position three and box number two is now on position one. So we can edit this and set box number two to position one. So on the left side. And the last case is box number one, which is in the middle in this case, switches with box number two on the right side. So box number one needs to go two to the right. Box number two need to go two to the left. New position of box number one, it's moving here. So new position is three of box number one. And the position of box number two is on position two in the middle. And now we come to our last case and it's finally done. So again, copy paste, copy scenario five, hold shift, click here, and you can copy it all. Copy it above control variable, variables. Change this to scenario six, our last scenario. And again, this is done now. Our last scenario is number three is on left. Two is in the middle, one is on the right side. To do this, we, we simply need to reverse our normal order. So position chest one is on the right side, so it's three. Position number two of chest two is in the middle, so it's number two. And as it stands, chest number three is on the left side, so position is one. And now again and again and again, we go for the switch. So three is this, two is this. We need to switch two and three. So chest three needs to move two to the right and chest two needs to move two to the left. New position, chest three switched here. So chest three is now on position two. That's already right here. And chest number two, edit, chest number two moves to position one. No walls are changed. All right. Now the next case, again, this means box number three switches with box number one. So chest number three needs to move four to the right. Chest number one needs to move four to the left. New position of box three is three, as it stands here. And new position of box one is position one. So we change this to chest one and go to our, our last case. And the last case is box number two, which is currently here, switches with box number one, which is currently here. So Box number two needs to move two to the right. Box number one needs to move two to the left. 
new position of box number two is on the right side, so it's free. We edit it. Uh, box number two is now in position three, so the right side. And box number one is now in the middle, so it's two. And this should be it for the really, really annoying part. So we are basically done with it. And now the only thing we need is to ask our player to guess which box has the ball in it. And we do this in between here. So here's our count chest. And if count chest is 10, so if it switched around 10 times, then we ask, so we click double on this start game, uh, start share game switch to put uh, the short choices in between. And now we simply ask where the ball is right now. So it's on the left, it's on the middle or on the right side. We make uh, no cancel choice, so we need to uh, select one of those and hit OK. Now we get three more uh, cases here and now we need to... Alright, since uh, the ball is always going inside our number two, so the ball basically goes into this box. This is always number two. So we simply need to check if our guess is the same as... So we simply need to check the position of uh, box two, if it corresponds to uh, the, the, uh, the site we cho have chosen. So to do this, we simply create a conditional branch in here, ask if chest two is on position one and create an else branch. So this means if we say at the end, uh, chest two is on the left, uh, left side and it's, it is on the left side. So since uh, position chest two, you, if you remember, one uh, means left side. So in this case, we can say you won 1000 gold or whatever you want to put in there. So we give a message, we change your gold, we increase it by 1000 or whatever you feel like you should win. And in the else case, so if basically if you say it's left, but the box is not on the left, then you can say you lost. So, and now we can copy this again, this position chest, and do the same, copy it and paste it onto the middle case. And here we simply ask if it's two. So when you say it's in the middle and chest number two is on position two, so in the middle, then you won. In the other case, you lost. And now we can copy this thing again, put it on to the right choice. And again, if, if we say it's on the right side and box two is on position three, which means the right side, then you won and otherwise you lost. So this was pretty big and pretty annoying as I already warned you before. And I think it should now be working as intended. Otherwise we are pretty much lost here. So this is a message here. Yeah, you so it goes to the middle, stays in the middle, goes to the left, goes to the middle, goes to the right, goes to the right. So we keep track of it. Uh, 
So it should be on the right side now. And if we choose the right side, it says you won. Now we can play it again and check if it's... So, keep track of it. And it should be on the right side. Again, we won. And now we can, let's say, let's uh, check another one and uh, choose the wrong one to see if it's also working. But as I said, this is some, this, these are the weaknesses of RPG Maker. So stuff like this is really hard to set up and annoying to check. So it should be in the middle right now. So I choose the left and it says I lost. And that's it for the tutorial. I hope you, you made it until this point. And I hope you like it and it helps you. And see ya.